Howdy folks, in this wonderful box I have a Zeta FX61 Phantom Wing which is exactly the same as this only uh, about twice the size. Comes from Banggood, um, purchase links are in the description as usual and thanks Banggood uh, for sending this for the review. I'm really looking forward to building this one. Uh, about three of my friends have them and they just look sensational. Look at the size of it, it barely fits on my big build table. It all comes really well protected in bubble wrap, nicely packed I have to say. So here are all the bits and pieces, we have the centre pod with a motor cover with lots of space for all your batteries and gear in the centre there. Um, some solid yeah, solid spars and a big centre spar as well that passes through the pod. Now the other side. Uh, the wings are removable, I believe. Two fins which get glued on uh, either to the wings or to the body. I'll have to work that out, I'm not too sure. Uh, some nice decals here. Instruction manual. I have a Moodoo motor. It looks like a 35-36 size, but this is called an M2816-1920 kV. We have a Beals 40 amp ESC. Two props, which is a nice touch. So we have a 9x6 prop, two 9 gram servos, and they're saying it's going to run on a 3S 5300 milliamp hour battery. So I might be putting a, a couple of 3000 batteries in connection instructions, motor mount. Now I've been told uh, that that can be a bit suspect and you're better to strengthen that straight away, which I will do. Little bits and pieces, what have we got here? Ah, oh, a little bit of glue, there we go. Comes with glue, very nice. Although the Phantom Wing comes with a really nice set of decals, I decided straight off to uh, personalise the colour scheme so that I'm not the same as everyone else at the flying field. So I'm tearing off all the decals. Now the control horns, I'm not happy with it all. That uh, gluing surface is inadequate. And for a big wing that's going to be carrying a lot of gear, uh, Zeta Science, really, please improve the control horns. So I'm uh, making up a, um, a backing plate, uh, <coughs> which will slip over the top of the control horn and glue onto the surface to give more um, gluing surface to spread the load. My flying buddy, the other Andrews, uh, Phantom Wing crashed badly on Maiden uh, during a fast pass because the control horn pulled out. So I'm going to make sure mine is glued on very securely. The push rod and connector are sturdy enough. I'm cutting up a little bit of fuel line uh, to slip over the clevis connector just to make sure it never unintentionally comes unconnected. As with all foam planes, the hinges are okay when they start off, but they will wear out fairly quickly. So I'm going to strengthen them straight away with a smear of hot glue, top and bottom, just for the end two inches on either end. And that'll stop the tear starting. Now it's time to apply my paint scheme and I'm going to go for maximum visibility and orientation uh, and I found that broad black stripes on the right wing and complete black left wing on the undersurface gives you the best visibility and orientation cues so I'm just using uh, clear packing tape to mask off the areas that I don't want the spray to go onto and leaving the other areas bare and I'm using spray enamel. This is actually uh, black gloss. I probably would prefer to use matte black and I may go over it with another coat of matte. Uh, matte just gives, seems to give a, a more solid color. And this is the left wing under surface and that's just going to be solid black apart from the wing tip. Now the wing tip is going to be an outrageous fluoro pink which really stands out well up in the sky. And the fins are going to be fluoro pink as well. So my wing is going to stand out. I'm not going to mistake it for anyone else's down at the field. 
I decided to upgrade the servos to 13 gram metal gears, uh, which meant that I had to enlarge the hole so that it can mount properly. And I needed to drill out the servo arm using a, a 1.5 millimeter drill so the push rod would fit. And that's a nice tight fit now. Now it's time to glue the control horn into the alevons and a bit of glue into the slot, control horn in and then the reinforcing patch over the top. Nice and strong, that's not going to pull out. Now this is the, the main wing going into the centre pod and that's just a little bit of glue in either side of the slot and spreading it around a bit. And then and then positioning the main spar and you need to make sure that that's poking out evenly either side and it's about 25 millimeters so that it'll fit into the uh, fit over the wing spar and into the wing clamp the canopy clips uh, clip onto the main spar quite tightly so they've got uh, nice big handles passing through to the top of the canopy so that you can pull it off and this is a reinforcing disc that comes with the kit now uh, and that's to uh, reinforce the plastic motor mount. I'm sanding off some of that paint from the fins so that I can glue it onto the uh, centre pod. The fins are only glued onto the centre pod because in this version the wings are removable and they just slide onto the main spar and clamp down with a little plastic clamp. To assemble the, the plane, the wing spar slides inside the pod spar and then there's a little plastic clamp and a, a plywood plate uh, that have bolts to retain the wing nice and securely. So there's my hive is colour scheme and underneath I might continue that stripe and the black right up to the centre line. So a bit more masking and a bit more spraying. Now I found this model repelled the paint uh, occasionally in some parts so I needed to wipe it down with denatured alcohol to get rid of the mold release or whatever it is on the surface. So now gluing the motor mount in and I'm just roughening that up with a bit of sandpaper for a really good glue join. Sanding the foam again to get rid of that uh, mold release or whatever it is. I'm using brown Gorilla Glue which is a really strong glue and it foams up a little bit to uh, fill in the gaps. And a bit more glue and fitting the top uh, part of the foam motor mount. And as, as I said, this stuff does foam up, so you need to sort of weight it down or clamp it to hold it in position. I extended the servo lead so that they pass right into the fuselage without having to uh, have a connector. And I'm opening up the, the foam channel to fit that servo lead into. And now I can connect it up and make sure that servo is working okay, and it is. Very good. Move on. A few dobs of uh, hot glue just to hold the servo in. I like the hot glue mounting for servos because you can pull them out if you need to, but they're held in quite securely. And there's one Elevon working. And a bit of extra cloth tape over the servo just to make sure. Now I can uh, bolt the motor into the motor mount. This is a bit fiddly, uh, but I wanted to make sure I could take the motor out and put it back in again. Adding the prop and the prop nut, I ended up using a lock nut instead of the supplied nut for that one. Now I can connect up the ESC and make sure it's all going to work properly. And that was turning the wrong way initially, so I swapped over the leads. Wiping down with some methylated spirits or denatured alcohol so that I can glue on some Velcro, Velcro strips to hold the internals and a bit of sandpaper as well just to make sure. That's where I'm going to mount the receiver so a bit of uh, Velcro to hold it there. This block of foam holds the battery in position and I'm going for a minimum weight setup with a single 3000 milliamp hour battery right up in the nose and an extra 80 grams of lead in the canopy to get the CG right. And that puts the CG right where those handles are or right on the main spar. All up weight 1220 grams. Now a current test and I've got uh, 23 amps maximum. So that's all good. A little bit of tape on the leading edge just for a bit of protection. And we're good to go. Looking very nice I think. Can't wait for the maiden.